Pues te dije que no. ¿Qué vas a hacer? ¿Vas a matar a mi familia? ¿Qué te pasa? What's up guys? Ruben Arce here with another video for the Cinematography Lab. And action. So Mario did bring him, huh? I told you. Today I'm going to share with you some clips that I shot using one of the favorite cameras of my collection, the Super 16 Eclair NPR. I'm not going to show the NPR today. That nice camera with some of the best accessories and with some of my own modifications requires a video of its own. What I want to show you today is some footage that we shot two years ago in Los Angeles. We used the NPR Kodak 500T and a couple of undisclosed lenses that can actually create good quality images. We shot this exercise with my friend Chaka. He is a great writer and director and he put this exercise together. Thanks to the three talented professional actors who helped us with this exercise. For when we kill him. We're going to kill him? Mm-hmm. Oh, we're going to be bad. Super bad. We used two aperture lights and a small LED fixture to light the scene. To be honest, I don't remember if the aperture lights were tungsten balanced or if we added an orange shell. But I do remember that the light was tungsten balanced that day. What's that like? Oh, that's bad. That's very bad. I had one of the aperture lights inside a room coming through the door. The other light was pointed towards the wall that can be seen behind the girls. And the small LED light was on top of the actresses to fill in the shadows a bit. I want to be evil. Oh, we're gonna be Satan today. The story was about two girls who abduct a guy. So I wanted the light to enhance the concept of someone doing something underhand while hiding in the dark. <laughs> I used my trusty Seconic L558 Cine to measure the light. I was close to the action, so I used the incident meter only. I'm happy with the results. Every shot we filmed that day was exposed the way I wanted it. ¿Qué vas a hacer? ¿Vas a matar a mi familia? ¿Qué te pasa? We shot this roll of film two years ago, the day before I shot the other roll in Las Vegas. The roll of film was at least three years old when I sent it to the lab. So even when I don't think it's really grainy, it could have been less grainy. I used a 14mm lens T3.1 and a 24mm T1.5 to take these shots. I didn't take notes that day, but I remember I stopped the lenses down a bit so the iris was not open all the way. As with any other film camera, the image gets dark as you close the iris down. That, combined with the low light situation and the fact that I was trying to follow the action, led to having several images out of focus. The focusing screen of my camera was laser brightened by the late great technician Bernie O'Doherty. Even having that modification, it was difficult to judge focus. I calculated the depth of field of some of the shots and it was around three inches in some cases. Having the subject farther from the camera and stopping the lens down would certainly help to get images in focus. That was something we had to trade in order to film in a small apartment without a lot of light. The NPR is a professional camera and happily in this test it performed like one. The camera was serviced three or four years ago by Bernie and the magazines were converted to Super 16, which worked beautifully. I didn't see any scratches on the film. The point of the test was to capture and synchronize sound with the image. I have the Tobin motor, which is a Crystal Sync 1. We used a Zoom H6 and a boom mic to capture the sound. It worked like a charm. I synced the slate with a mark on the audio waves and it worked perfectly. Unfortunately, I can't share much of the audio because it would have to beep the sound every three seconds. The story is not exactly PG-13, and it has a lot of profanity. The camera is not completely silent, so even when I use a Barney, you can hear the camera running in the back. But it was not bad at all. The Barney didn't do anything to begin with. 
I'm going to replace the foam with modern sound blocking material that actually works, but we were shooting in a tiny hallway. I was inside the bathroom with the camera pointed towards the hallway, which was like 3 feet wide and the sound is usable. With some distance and a better barney, camera noise should not be a problem. Also, I used a 100 foot metal spool, which makes much more noise than a 400 foot roll on a core. The MPR is one of the light and compact cameras that changed the world for filmmakers back in the 60s. But in today's standards, the camera is big and heavy. The image is great and stable, so it can be used on professional projects for sure. It's Super 16, so you take advantage of the film and the pixels you get on the scan. The crystal sync capabilities make the camera a great candidate for narrative work and music videos. I'll dedicate a video to the camera in the future. You'll then see how this specific unit can compete with some of the best cameras made for the 16mm format.